So, uh, as you all know, uh, the the task for the second part for the online for offline part was provided by Yannis Taxi or Taxi, uh, which is sounds better. Uh, and um, the Yandex section will be divided exactly the same parts. There will be first a lecture, then it would be uh, a part from the creators of the task by Yandex uh, Taxi, and then it would be last, uh, last part with a couple of teams explaining uh, their solutions. The teams that go on the top according to the uh, public uh, part. So uh, and now I would like to introduce our first speaker of the section, um, Igor Yashkov, uh, and uh, his uh, lecture is uh, Ivy Dustin. Thank you very much. Uh, hi everyone. Um, it's very nice to be here and it's very nice to see so many great minds in one place. Um, so um, yeah, let me begin. <clears throat> So my, um, my talk will be about uh, A-B testing in Yandex um, and how it is done. So there will be not uh, much uh, ML, not much machine learning in, uh, in, in this part. I hope you will, not, you will not be disappointed, but there still will be one or two logos of CatBoost. Uh, so part of this talk was presented uh, at KDD conference uh, in August. The, this year, so if you were there, you may have uh, you may have seen it. So let's begin. Um, first, a brief overview of what I will be talking about. Um, <clears throat> so I will be I will give a definition of uh, A/B testing and uh, describe why we use this method and how we do it in, um, in Yandex. And I will talk about metrics that we use. So that is uh, like metrics are crucial part of uh, A/B. And uh, I will describe how do we measure user experience, how do we create new metrics, and how do we like, collect data, how do we use our huge amounts of uh, experimental data to uh, create uh, new metrics. So first, like, I will answer the question why use uh, ABT, why use AB, AB testing, and, how, and, and when do we use it. So under the hood of Yandex Search, uh, are a lot of algorithms, are a lot of models, and are uh, we are constantly those models are constantly evolving, and we are constantly updating them. And we want to answer the question: which ranking models, for example, are better? So we we use um, different models to combine our SERP to rank results, to insert results, uh, and uh, to blend them. And of course, we have metrics like uh, offline metrics and metrics of model quality like um, mean square error or um, like log loss uh, that are telling us something about the performance, the quality of prediction of the model. Uh, but in the end, we want to know if users are happy. In the end, we want to know if what we have done have, has made the users happier. So we, we want to answer this question. And so other models are uh, used not only for search, but, but for example for recommendations. If you, want, uh, if you want to watch a movie and you, for example, issue a query like which movie do, uh, which movies are, which sci-fi movies are better, we can give you one or the other uh, ranking and we also want to know uh, which one makes, makes you as a user happier. And also there are, um, tasks that not, are not related to any ranking or any, any recommendations and uh, those are like design tasks, UX tasks, uh, if um, you decided, you, you picked a movie from the previous list and you decided to watch it and you like, uh, and you issue a query like wa watch this movie at the theater, we want to present the results um, to you as, so, so that you solve your problem, so that you come to the solution uh, of your problem as quick as, uh, uh, as possible and um, we can do this with different UX, diff uh, different uh, design decisions, and we also want to know which one is better. So, how do we do this? Um, uh, so, we, we, have, uh, we, we have made some change to our system, we have made some change to our ranking or design or something else, and how do we know if uh, the users are happy? So, one way to do it, for example, is to look uh, to ship our decision. So, uh, this is a uh, uh, a graph that uh, describes some one of our metrics uh, that shows one of our metrics, and this like vertical blue line is um, 
uh, well, it's a uh, time of, of our shipment, and we made a change to the system, and we can see that the metric goes down, and from this like fr from this graph, we could conclude that our like our change to the system has uh, has caused this change in metric, and uh, but this is well not uh, uh, very reliable and not a very effective path. I will will describe why. And one of the reasons is because we like have lots of these releases. We have lots of uh, uh, the, the changes are made constantly, and uh, the, uh, so something like something changes like every day, and you cannot uh, understand which um, change to the system caused what. So we need some way to tell uh, which change is responsible for for what, which rise or decrease of our metrics. Um, and also, um, even if we could do that on the on this graph, we it's still not a valid um, method of testing causal uh, relationships. Uh, why? Because, uh, as you all perfectly know, as data analysts, uh, correlation is not causation, and there are many, many, many interesting uh, and uh, strange and funny examples of how different metrics uh, uh, correlate with uh, with each other with, with each other without well any causal relationship between them so this is a, a chart that shows like um, a serum cholesterol level in blood and it goes up uh, and down and you could uh, find some points where like Justin Bieber was born or Facebook was was invented and you could say oh this this caused the drop or the rise of serum cholesterol but well it's not true it's just a coincidence and there are like there is a whole resource dedicated to uh, finding this uh, interesting correlations uh, between totally unconnected metrics like a number of movies in which Nicolas Cage appeared in and a number of people that drowned in the pool. So um, the main uh, takeaway from here is that, well, if something correlates, it does not mean that uh, one is the reason for the other. So we need a tool to, to find this causal uh, relationship and uh, we can look at the Mm, uh, area, the science that has done it well successfully for quite uh, a long time, and it's medicine. So there is a like established um, procedure for testing if a drug uh, works well and if a drug like decreases or in increases uh, the duration of uh, uh, illness of symptoms, and uh, it's called a double-blind. Uh, um, placebo controlled study so it's done like this uh, so you uh, you have two groups you have a group of people that are um, that, that you want to test your drug on you split them randomly into two parts one part is assi is assigned placebo the other part is assigned uh, the drug and after uh, the treatment course you um, measure, you test your hypothesis that uh, the drug is uh, testing like, better than uh, the placebo. That is statistically, that the decrease, for example, of uh, symptoms duration is statistically significant. Um, and, well, uh, ba based on this test, you can reject or accept your, uh, your null hypothesis. Um, we can basically do the same. Uh, we can have our users, we can split them randomly into in the simplest way uh, into two parts, um, show them different versions of our system, and um, test for uh, if, if uh, our desired metric had, had, has changed significantly. So on this graph, uh, our uh, experiment is what we call gray. Uh, so we, we, have, uh, two, um, we have two groups, and on these two groups, um, the confidence interval of our metric uh, overlap, and so we, we we cannot reject our null hypothesis. We cannot say that uh, this change caused any any difference in, in our metric. And this is a valid test. Uh, this is a valid method for testing causal relationships because the only difference between the, uh, the only difference between the groups we are testing is our treatment. So this is our treatment effect. All right. So um, we rely on this tool on uh, AB uh, tests a lot, as do all web-based, large web-based companies as Facebook, Amazon, 
um, Twitter and so on. So anyone um, in the Yandex search and well in other parts of Yandex can conduct A-B experiments using our internal tool. And in search, so th those are numbers for, for Yandex search, we, we conducted 4,000 uh, experiments last year and about uh, a thousand, a bit less than a thousand of them were shipped to production. So 11 experiments begin every day. And since we have such, uh, since we have such a big number of uh, A-B experiments, we cannot wait for one of them to end before we start another because, um, well, it would mean uh, a big like queue of uh, experiments going. So we overlap them and uh, we have this multi-dimensional scheme uh, where we have dimensions for experiments, for example, with ranking and dimensions for experiments with design uh, and dimensions, and on this slide, uh, uh, I could only like draw two dimensions, but in fact, we have like 50 dimensions or ten, uh, maybe about 100 dimensions of, 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 dif of different for different aspects of quality. So, like, everyone has their own index. When you open uh, your, when, when you open search, when you issue a query and the result page opens, you are randomly assigned uh, to the slots of, 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 on these dimensions and you are randomly assigned to a number of uh, treatments and the combination, well, you, you can guess is uh, quite large. So you, all, all of you get, like, their, their own, a result page and this is like uh, this is just a histogram that shows on uh, how many treatments are there per user when uh, they open uh, 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 Yandex search and uh, you can see that well it has like this nice Gaussian form but there are two bins on the left that are uh, well bigger than expected and those are what we call exclusive experiments uh, where we those are the users that uh, have uh, that participate in experiments that cannot be overlapped with others that cannot be like in, in, in this scheme they can only uh, th those those experiments can can only um, um, exist like in is isolation from other experiments so those, those are these users all right so um, I've, I've described how A-B is conducted and how do we do it, but, well, the main reason we do this beca is because we want to make a decision, and, and all our decisions are based upon metrics. So, metrics, um, well, it, like, um, it's what drives our development. So, you could think uh, about metrics-driven development uh, as a form of uh, gradient descent. So uh, the metrics is what uh, metrics are what we optimize in. The, uh, this is uh, uh, they are our approximation of our real goals. And A-B experiments is a step in this descent. So we make a step. We see if the metric changes in the right way. We if it does, we ship it, and we are closer to our goal. So um, the metric that drives our um, Evolution is called North Star. Uh, it, it, it's a uh, like universal term for the for the your key metric, your, your main metric of, of your production system. Um, it's uh, the analogy is um, you are kind of driving, uh, you are sailing a ship to a North Pole, and your approximation of the North Pole is a North Star. And but the closer you get to the North Pole. As the farther the, uh, the star will guide you because, well, if you are like uh, somewhere around North Pole, the star is not a good metric of where it is. You, you, need, you need to have some better uh, instruments and um, that's why you need to update your key metrics constantly and I will be talking about how, uh, how do we do it. So first, um, I'll give an example of how um, our ranking metrics main ranking metrics evolved. And so um, some time ago, I think four of, or five year, uh, years uh, ago, we relied heavily on click metrics uh, that 
uh, approximated uh, user happiness with the fact of clicks. So if you have ranking and you want to know if user is satisfied with this ranking, the obvious signal uh, for user satisfaction is click or tap on a mobile uh, device. So uh, this is uh, and this is the basis for the metric that is called abandonment. If uh, the, the result page is abandoned, if the user did not make a click or a, a tap on this page, we count it as a, as, uh, as a well, not a good query. If the page is not abandoned, we count, count it as a, 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 as a good page. And uh, this is the metric is just a ratio of um, clicked pages and total and, and total pages. And we have to decrease it because abandoned pages uh, are, are bad ones. Uh, this leads to some um, overfits that we quickly learned about. For example, our ranking algorithms decided that it's good to um, show in the upper places, uh, the, in the upper results, the, re the documents that were kind of clickbait, that generated clicks but did not really solve user issue. So user clicks there because they see something clickbait in a, in, in a snippet, and then they quickly uh, return away, uh, ret return to, to, to search. So the like, obvious update for uh, this metric is only count the clicks that are long, that when user goes away from the result page and they spend some time there and uh, like they uh, do not return at all or return after a long time, that means that they, uh, the click or trap was successful, and so we count this as a win. And long abandonment is just an update of abandonment metric that um, says that count only the long clicks. All right, so this is um, this what was good, but not good enough, because sometimes uh, uh, there are like scenarios where user do not uh, really need to click. They issue a query where they can um, uh, where they can solve their problem, they can find their answer right there on the uh, result page. They can look at the photos of the uh, cute kittens, so they can uh, see the um, translation of the term they were looking for, and so on. Uh, so, we, we ha we, in, in scenarios like this, we do not have click as a, a signal of, uh, uh, as a prediction of success. And we, uh, we could Mm, even not have any interaction with the page as, as a prediction of, su of success. User, ju user just looks at a, uh, at a page and understands wh what they were looking for. So, uh, in, uh, in these scenarios, um, uh, we um, came with a solution that was based on the intuition that if user completes the search session quickly, then this search session is successful. So. Um, um, what like divides Yandex search from uh, social networks uh, like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is that we want user to spend um, as um, little time on our service as possible. We want to like make our interaction with uh, with search. We want user to solve their problem as quickly as possible. Um, and uh, social networks they have. Uh, a different goal. They want to maximize user um, involvement with, uh, with the service. So if uh, the session time is small, we count it as a win. And we do not uh, care about how user, uh, mm, we do not care about how uh, user interacts with the page. And um, an update of, on the, of this uh, metric that um, tells us that we do not care how user interacts with our service. We uh, want them to return to us as frequently as possible. And we could, we could count session times, but we also could count absence times. So this is like a, 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 a kind of um, time timeline where user issues uh, queries in a, in, a search in a search session, then they come away for a time, and they, we call it absence, then they return. Uh, for a time, and, and we want these absences to be as small as possible. So it, um, it's the metric that tells us that if the user returns to us 
frequently they uh, more frequently in in a in a experiment than in control then they like us better they solve the problems with us better and well this is our prediction of, of success so you can see that those metrics are built in a kind of hierarchy so we uh, on, on the bottom and well here is on the top but well, <laughs> uh, so the most basic metrics are based on clicks and like long uh, clicks predict uh, user satisfaction better than uh, uh, just clicks and uh, session time predicts user satisfaction better than uh, long clicks and uh, and absence time predicts user satisfaction better than session time but uh, the like um, the pitfall here like the, the uh, uh, there is a thing that well we trade off our universality we trade off uh, the quality of our prediction of user happiness for metric sensitivity so the more universal is the metric the less sensitive it is so the um, the metric the most universal metric from these ones is absence time but it's very hard for us to uh, to see a significant change uh, in it but it, it it predicts like user satisfaction in every scenario and um, the vice versa with uh, abandonment it's quite a sensitive metric is it's a very sensitive metric but uh, we do not like believe it that it uh, is correlated with user satisfaction anymore um, so uh, now I will talk about the case um, in which so when you when you are looking at this hierarchy you uh, need to understand that when you're conducting a b experiment you you have to think about what will your uh, success criteria be what your main metric what your key metric for your um, for your change will be and uh, this case illustrates uh, how um, important it is to choose a uh, right uh, criteria so I, I have a um, one moment I have a, a, uh, those three um, uh, letters here that I haven't well, talked about uh, in previous parts is just an uh, abbreviation for overall evaluation criteria so it's it just means your key metric so this is an example of how choosing a wrong key metric can ruin your, your AB experiment and uh, this is uh, uh, a service that is uh, called well, Yandex homepage and this is a page where many users uh, start uh, their like search sessions and one of key metrics, uh, one of key KPI metrics for uh, the service is uh, total numbers of searches. So if user issue many searches through our homepage, we consider it good. So what, the experiment is uh, about um, a, a very specific feature uh, on the service uh, that is uh, called suggested queries. So when you start typing when, when you're like focus on an uh, input field and you start typing something in this input field we give you a suggest uh, a, a, a suggested query if you uh, started um, typing fa you are probably searching for facebook and at the time when this, when this experiment was conducted we did not have uh, suggested queries for empty prefixes so when you have when you haven't start typing yet uh, you did not get any suggested queries and um, well the team decided that it would be nice to show something for the users who have who haven't started typing yet and um, if you open Yandex Home now uh, and I think most of the search, search engines do this you just get historical suggest uh, uh, so the, the queries that you issued previously but at that time uh, we thought that well it would be nice to show some just some popular queries uh, that we, we could guess that if the query is popular we could guess that the user will be searching for them and we could increase total number of searches issued through home page and we could uh, increase our revenue because the more searches we get the more revenue we get so uh, this was an idea for this experiment and the goal was set in total number of searches um, the experiment was conducted and indeed we saw that the total number of searches increased um, and uh, we even checked that 
um, uh, user satisfaction in terms of abandonment at that time, that user satisfaction did not drop overall. And uh, this, uh, this was shipped to production, uh, but then we started digging the, into this experiment like deeper, um, and we saw that the part of queries uh, that we, the part of new queries that we get, so those searches uh, from this empty prefix suggest, they were a very little part uh, of our overall searches, and they had a very high rate of abandonment. So users issued them without any intention of searching, really. They just used this as a navigation tool to get the, to, to get the search page. And um, so this is, um, so this rate of uh, unsuccessful queries, this rate, 90% uh, of queries without any successful clicks is un un unusually high, but we did not uh, see, we, we did not see this um, in, like, oh, in, when we're counting the metric overall, because this fraction is very small. So the noise from this other part, from those all other queries that were not affected, was higher than the signal from this small, from this part of small, uh, small part of new, of new queries. Um, so we did add new searches, but they were highly unsuccessful. And uh, you remember that we had another. Um, goal for this experiment that was uh, set in revenue, in increasing revenue, uh, and there is a very interesting feedback uh, loop in, uh, that I will explain now uh, that is uh, connected to, uh, to our uh, machine learning algorithm that is uh, choosing the sponsored search results, that is, that is choosing advertising. So, uh, see what happened. Uh, we started, uh, users started issuing queries, queries without um, clicking on the results. And they did not click not only uh, on the organic results, they did not click on any results at all, on, ad, on, on advertising too. And what does uh, an like, advertising algorithm, uh, advertising ML think uh, when they see that users stop clicking some banners? Well, it, uh, updates, it updates the click-through rate prediction for these banners. It starts thinking that those banners have lower quality, or lower relevance, and uh, it starts pessimizing them for other queries. So we uh, introduced this feedback loop that user issues a query, does not, does not um, click on advertising, advertising gets pessimized, we lose revenue. So this is, uh, this is a very interesting effect because it could not be really tested in A-B experiment. It, it could only be tested uh, in, uh, like when you ship your change to full, full scale 100 production, because when you spoil this tiny fraction, like 2% or even 10% of data, you, you do not get this effect. But when you ship this to all users and all advertisers, you do get this effect. So some, less of, some lessons learned from uh, this case is that you should choose your overall evaluation criteria wisely because uh, you, could, you can easily overfit to criteria that do not involve quality. If you choose, uh, if, if your metric only involves like quantity of some simple actions like clicks, queries, and so on, you will overfit to it one way or another. Your system and your like, team will find a way to hack this, this metric, to game it. Um, and this thing that uh, the, our target su subset of queries was, was very small and the signal was there, but we calculated the metric for overall queries and the noise from overall queries like overwhelmed the signal from the small subset. So if you have target subset, you should calculate metrics for it. And uh, really, uh, AB is not like a universal tool. It's, it's uh, Okay, for most uh, for most cases, but there are some effects, some network effects, some market effects that cannot be calculated in AB. And well, my colleagues from uh, Taxi that uh, will be uh, speaking after after me have have this effect, I think, in full scale because they have double-sided market where one one part of market affects one uh, the other part of market, and it's well uh, the, uh, the AB experimentation becomes very very hard. In search, we are lucky to, uh, to, to not have this network effect. Um, so when you have chosen um, a metric and you, have, uh, uh, you begin your A-B experiment, 
you will start like coming every day and uh, looking at the metric and um, wait for it, uh, wait for statistical significance to appear. So it's called picking and uh, it's really a problem and now I, I will illustrate why. So example, uh, imagine that uh, this is a, a graph, a chart of our uh, p-value of uh, our, our key metric in an A-B experiment. And the points on the x-axis are days, and uh, y-axis is p-value that's decreasing, and on the fourth day of the experiment you see that, well, it has decreased under your desired like uh, false positive uh, rate limit, for example, under 0 0.05. Should you stop the experiment? Let's see what, uh, what, what happens if we do, and let's see what happens if we don't. So, uh, imagine that we have not one experiment, but hundreds, hundreds of them. Uh, and uh, these uh, are not really A-B experiments, these are A-A experiments. So these are experiments in which nothing happens. It's just one control group versus other control group. So if we run a simulation where we have hundreds of these um, hundred uh, A-A experiments and we do not peak, we come at the last day of the experiment and see how many of them are under uh, our significance rate and it behaves as expected. Uh, is somewhere around three to five to three to seven experiments will be uh, under uh, five percent uh, false positive rate, so five, five percent significance level. And that's like basically the definition of p-value. All right, and if we peak, we increase this uh, portion, we increase this fraction like dramatically because basically what we are doing is hacking our p-value. So instead of five, uh, three to seven experiments, we'll get like 12 to 18 experiments dropping under significance level because now we have manually chosen the data that supports our uh, initial hypo hypothesis. So like uh, picking is bad. And well, it would be an easy problem if, uh, well, if, if everything was so simple, it would be an easy problem. So just don't pick and uh, th that will be okay. But um, when you are in an environment where you have to move quickly, where you have to move, where you have to ship changes to your system quickly, you do not always have a luxury of conducting like proper two-week A-B experiments and wait for the results and seeing then that nothing had changed and so we have to move quickly and we have to um, have an instrument to test our hypothesis early. So and uh, imagine that you come like at the f on the fourth day of your experiments, you come, uh, come on the fifth day of your experiment, you come on the sixth day of your experiment and you see that um, p-value is way below the significance level, you should start to suspect something. You should start that, well, you, ha you don't have to wait uh, like 14 days to reject the null hypothesis, you could do it now. And um, my colleagues from our research team have uh, addressed this problem in, in, um, in their paper that is called sequential testing for early students of uh, online experiment. And well, it's really a, a great method for st stopping experiments early without that peaking uh, and p-value hacking problem. Um, and the last part of my talk will be about improving metrics, it, it, uh, about, um, I, I, I talked that, I, I, uh, I, I have said that you should improve your metrics constantly, but well, it's uh, the interesting part is um, how do we do it? So uh, how do we use our data to improve metrics? So how did we came up with this metrics hierarchy? How do we update them? Um, and well, the fact is that after you have conducted a lots of A-B experiments, you have like um, lots of data just lying uh, well, in, 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 your, in your database. For example, uh, I said that we have 4,000 exper 4, experiments last year, so these are like 4,000 point in, points in our data set, much more this than on, uh, on this slide. And we have an information for each point, uh, well, not for each, but for some of the points, some of the experiments in this data set, we have a label. We 
we can say this is an improvement for users or this is a degradation for users. It's uh, not for every experiment we can, we, we can uh, say this, but for quite a lot of them. And this could be our uh, set on which we can validate our hypothesis. So we collect these pools of experiments, the sets of experiments, and when we have an idea of new metric, when we, have, when we think that some metric, uh, some metric could be better than the ones that we are using now, uh, we can test it and we can, we can calculate metrics for this metric. And the basic metrics that we are using is sensitivity. I already talked about it when I showed you uh, our metrics hierarchy. And sensitivity is basically, uh, well, um, in, in the most simple way, it's a fraction of the uh, exper experiments um, uh, in which metrics, metric sees the difference in which it changes significantly. And uh, you could, uh, well, update it to, uh, as a function of metrics p-values or test statistics in our experiments. And well, this, uh, this, proper, this quality of metric tells us that we will have to use less data for it to see the change. And the other main um, quality of a metric is alignment, uh, which is, uh, uh, well, basically it's does it agree with our verdict? So we have this red and uh, green experiments representing improvements and degradation, and we want metric to align with it. We want metric to agree with our with our verdicts, uh, so that well, uh, it, uh, it it means that the, the metric behaves correctly. And uh, those two qualities, sensitivity and alignment, is what allows us to choose better metrics and uh, what allows us to better, for, for, for what allows for better measurement of user experience and satisfaction. So that's all. Thank, thank you very much for listening. Um, and if, if you have any questions, I will happily answer. Uh, so, if you have any questions, he'll have your answers. <laughs> no, no questions? Uh, then thanks a lot for, uh, for your lecture. Um, Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, as you, again, remember, uh, the second task was provided by Yandex Taxi, and now I would like to invite our creator, the creator, Emil Kayumov, who will be delighted to present you the task and tell you more about Yandex Taxi and, uh, and everything. So, uh, give up to Emil. Hi. Hello, nice to meet you again. Hope you enjoyed the task we prepared for you. Uh, but today I want to tell you about uh, how we use machine learning in Yandex Taxi. Uh, to begin with, uh, some basic words about uh, Yandex Taxi. Uh, what is it? Of course, it's a Yandex. <laughs> it's a taxi service. So we, uh, the main goal uh, of us is to move, uh, to help people move from some point A to another point B. And uh, make it uh, faster, more comfortable, uh, more easier or cheaper. Uh, we are working in uh, 16 countries right now. Uh, in Europe, in Asia, uh, in Africa and uh, have made uh, 1 billion uh, rides uh, last year, uh, by last year, uh, sin since uh, our beginning. Uh, and Yandex Taxi is also a food delivery service, Yandex Food, and not only prepared food, it's also a 
project for preparing at home, Yandex Chief, uh, not only Jaxim. Uh, also, we are developing a self-driving car uh, because we because we think about future. Uh, our car can work in uh, specific uh, uh, conditions of Russia. Uh, for example, winter. Uh, it works as a taxi service in Skolkovo, not only as test mode. Uh, but also as a taxi. And uh, maybe some of you uh, drive by our self-driving car. Uh, but I want to tell about uh, some tasks um, which we solve with machine learning in Yandex Taxi. But uh, of course I can't tell about all of them because uh, there are a lot of and uh, of them, and uh, we have no time for it. Uh, all we do in Yandex Taxi can be separated in two big fields. The first of uh, it is uh, improving our product. Uh, of course, it's a uh, right replication, which uh, all of us uh, use for uh, order a taxi. But it's non uh, our ser our service is not only. Uh, Right, the uh, right uh, application. It's also a um, maybe more complex driver application and a platform which uh, communi uh, which lets communicate uh, driver and uh, rider and uh, made uh, a lot of our things. And the second field of our business is a uh, our activity is a business optimization because uh, we have a more and more rides, uh, more and more. Uh, riders, more drivers, more orders, and uh, we should uh, optimize our business to grow faster, grow for more effective, and uh, our stuff. And uh, uh, there are uh, different tasks, for instance, uh, effectivity tasks, uh, because uh, it's about uh, how to match driver and rider effective how to control supply and demand in our service, how to uh, balance uh, incorrect uh, balance uh, in different uh, parts of cities, uh, and how to be, how to let uh, all our users uh, take its cars. It's a marketing test, of course, uh, I think you know, it's about advertising, about uh, uh, discounting, about uh, uh, our, our things, how to uh, find new drivers, new users, how to uh, help them know new our products. It's a support task and quality control, which we uh, discussed later. And of course, anti fraud. Anti fraud. Because uh, the more your business uh, become, uh, more people want to use it to make money on you, uh, or crash your service, or hack your service. So you can, you should uh, work with it too. And our tasks. Uh, to begin with, uh, remote quality control is a, uh, one of our big tasks. Uh, and uh, firstly, what is quality control? We have a lot of drivers, a lot of cars, and we should control our quality of our service. So we, uh, our drivers should uh, send photos of his, his cars from different size, internal, external, uh, of his cars and uh, send it to us. Our people uh, analyze this photo and uh, decide uh, could the uh, driver start his work day or not. Uh, which, uh, we check uh, clean car or not, uh, correct car number because the driver can forget uh, to update uh, information, he changed his car since forget to uh, send us his new card number. Uh, 
check uh, correct model or cover of cars. But uh, the more drivers we, ha we have, the more photos we should analyze, the more people should uh, work on it. So we tried to use machine learning in these tasks to optimize uh, this process. We train some neural networks for it, and uh, they decide, uh, does it, uh, is it car clean or not? Is it a car broken or not? Is it a correct uh, car number or not? And uh, this model decides, can a driver start his work day or not? Uh, the second reason is uh, when drivers want to start, he uh, sends us photos and should wait when uh, assessors uh, check his photos. But uh, with machine learning, we can do it in seconds. And the driver can uh, fix problems or start his uh, work uh, instantly. Okay. The second task is support automatization. Uh, support is, uh, you know, uh, about how to decide some problem with uh, our users, of our drivers, our riders. Uh, we have some a lot of different, no, a lot of uh, source of uh, a lot of streams of uh, support. Uh, not only order commands. Driver can uh, write us uh, to complain in for some bug or social networks when someone can uh, mention us or driver and rider can communicate in chats with each other before us or supporting emails. And uh, if your business grows, uh, support uh, center should grow too. And it's uh, become more and, and more compli complicated to, to control your support center. So we want to uh, uh, so we want to make it easier or more effective. The second, the second reason is uh, we have a different types of messages in our support. Uh, not, all, not all messages is uh, equal and should be read or answered. Some messages are ur urgent, uh, for instance. Uh, when you forget your documents in cars, you should uh, instantly call your driver uh, when you're near you. Uh, uh, to to get your documents or phone back, but some messages is not so urgent, but maybe important. So when, for instance, driver driver uh, fi found a bag in your application and uh, send you send it to you, it's important. You should investigate this problem, but it's not so urgent. You you shouldn't uh, answer him uh, instantly. Uh, so, urgent uh, messages is not uh, important messages. Some important messages you uh, should uh, uh, analyze, uh, calculate counts of different problems, and uh, maybe decide to do something later. Uh, some messages, of course, uh, shouldn't be answered. For instance, uh, some mentions, uh, mentions in social networks. And uh, we made uh, a big system in our support, which uh, machine learning work with uh, with uh, a real human, and uh, machine learning help uh, our support center to be more effective, uh, to answer some messages uh, faster, some messages ignore, or some messages uh, answer later. Uh, and of course, if uh, our models not so sure to what to do, it's uh, sent uh, this problem to to real human. Okay, it's uh, about support, but now about marketing. Uh, some of uh, one of big parts of uh, our task in marketing is uh, 
tariff promotion. Uh, we have a lot of tariff, not only popular economy. Uh, it's uh, some comfort uh, tariff from, from comfort to business or uh, premium tariff and some specific uh, tariff like uh, child tariff or minivan. And uh, sometimes you want to tell people that uh, we have a child tariff because a lot of people don't know it, but we maybe it's, it will be useful for him for it for them. Uh, sometimes you want to help uh, our users try our uh, comfortable premium tariff to uh, push them use it. Uh, it's uh, important for us because uh, premium tariff uh, give give us, of course, give us a higher. It's, it has a higher cost and give us higher money. And uh, in long term, uh, users who who use uh, premium tariff uh, often more um, has more uh, retention and higher satisfaction of our servers. How we can affect? Of course, it's a, it can be a discount to our tariff. It can be a boost messages when uh, when we uh, tell users what uh, the tariff is exist or it's advertising. Uh, but uh, of course, we should remember about uh, limited budget because uh, we're business and we should uh, make money. We can't tr tr we can't uh, waste uh, uh, our money for discount. For instance, how we use machine learning for it? We, uh, if we want to uh, promote our tariff, we want to target our discounts. We use machine learning to find some users who, who similar to users who use uh, this premium tariff. It's called lookalike model. Uh, maybe you know. Uh, it's a first approach, and, the, it, and there is a direct approach when we can train on real impact on uh, discounts. It's uh, hard uh, because uh, you should, uh, of course, collect your data. If you want to uh, collect data about real impact, you should uh, randomly send users uh, discounts, for instance. Uh, but we use all, uh, both approaches and uh, in experiments uh, uh, compare it with each other or compare with different strategies uh, how to uh, give uh, best discounts to users, how to, to be more effective. Uh, it's about marketing and the uh, first part is about uh, improving our products and uh, Let's talk talk about two projects in uh, improve two projects in improving our project our project. Uh, the first one is a point B suggestion. What is this? Uh, we want to help users uh, order a car faster. Not uh, typing a full address, but uh, if you if it if he drive uh, to one point, maybe he drive uh, uh, there uh, again, and we try to understand it. We learn uh, patterns, patterns of rights for every users and uh, suggest uh, uh, locations uh, in our app. Uh, it's uh, on bottom of uh, screen. Uh, you, you can see bubbles with recommendations. For instance, if you are, uh, it's a work day, it's a morning, you at home, maybe you want to go to your work. Or you at Friday, it's an evening, you want, and you want to go to pub. Or it's a afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon, and you from, from home, from home wants to drive to your parents. Uh, how we do it? We train models for it. Uh, it's a two-stage model because uh, 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 we should uh, firstly extract can candidates for uh, recommendation by simple model. 
And uh, if uh, more complex model uh, score it. Uh, and uh, the, sec uh, the last one is about Airbot Q. You know this uh, task because we, you decided it in contest. Uh, Travis, when uh, he drives, when you, when he come to airport, uh, stay in uh, virtual queue and wait his orders. And we want to help him uh, to understand how long he will wait his order, because maybe he should uh, stay nearby airport zone or can have a rest, or maybe he shouldn't wait anymore because uh, there is no order for him. Uh, how we do it? We predict expected time of request for every airport for every position in queue. Not only for several fixed position as in your contest, but for every position uh, in queue. But uh, of course, there are real, in real world uh, there are some problems because uh, it's not equally that position in queue uh, is uh, uh, is how many orders will uh, become in uh, airports. Because uh, some drivers exit queue, some drivers refuse order, and you as a driver can uh, get order faster than uh, uh, your position in queue. And. Uh, Second reason, the driver can work in different tariffs, so uh, you have no order in comfort tariff, for instance, but uh, uh, driver, but your position uh, changed. Uh, there is some interesting facts in uh, this task, because uh, time in uh, between orders is exponentially distributed. So, uh, because of some uh, property of memoryless, uh, exponential distribution has a property of memoryless. So, uh, for instance, this situation can be, you need to wait uh, your order 20 minutes, for instance, you wait a 10 minutes, but after that, you again should uh, wait 20 minutes because uh, it is uh, uh, how, how many wa minutes you wait, it is uh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, you should wait. Uh, the same time, the same minutes as uh, you should wait at the beginning. Uh, it's okay for mathematics, but uh, how to do in a real app? You, you should uh, show your driver uh, how many minutes he should work his order. But uh, if uh, time uh, will not uh, decrease, decreased, how he uh, feel himself. So we should uh, make some tricks uh, to to decrease this time, but uh, to be uh, uh, okay. Uh, we should uh, use some tricks for decrease this time. How to do uh, we? How to do uh, predictions? We train separate models for every airport and every uh, tariffs, but uh, it's a one model for every position because position it's a hundreds of position for every queue, and we can't uh, train hundreds of models for every airport, every tariffs. Uh, models is like. Uh, in your baseline, in your contest, but uh, more complex. We have more statistics, uh, time features, and position features. Also, it's a gradient boosting regressor and uh, some working way for fitting. I think you understand uh, that in these tasks, uh, a lot of overfitting uh, exists uh, because uh, not so 
uh, not so big data, but uh, a lot of features uh, about uh, uh, this time series. Uh, but we need a universal approach because uh, new airports uh, uh, become and we need to easy easy way to add it to our models and we need to after updating our models with minimal uh, uh, time of human uh, so we try to do our approach more universal uh, for every airport of every size uh, I have seen some solutions of you from uh, your contest and find some interesting things. Uh, your, many of you use a holiday. It's a real problem for us. Uh, every holiday we have our metrics decreased because uh, in airports, situation in airports is a, uh, a new situation in airports and the model can't predict it. Uh, you made a lot of different interesting statistics with orders and uh, day times. Maybe some of them, some of them uh, we add uh, for our models. And uh, I, I see only gradient boosting with features. Uh, maybe uh, no of you use uh, the classic uh, time series method or somebody use it. Uh, everybody use gradient boosting. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and that's all. Maybe some questions. Thanks for the presentation. You said for each Yandex Taxi user, you have a personalized. Um, suggest, uh, suggest where to go, right? To make it easier for the person to order the, uh, the place that he or she wants to go. Right? Uh, or for each person, you said personal... Um, yes, yes, based on history, based on history. And do you do that in online fashion, like for every um, order? You update your model learns uh, an online it's real time. It's uh, what in current moments from this position, uh, what, what you are. Uh, this is the object. It's for this uh, this time of moment. So we made a prediction. Of your yeah, yeah. I see. It. Like predictions, recommendations are real time. Yes. What I'm saying is, when I order a taxi. Does your model learn from this order at the moment, or like you do batch learning in once a month, or uh, when you made your next uh, order model should uh, use uh, your last uh, order too? Okay, and for so this is what I would say online learning. And what kind of models or tools you use for that? Uh, we Bad use the gradient boosting for many of uh, product tasks. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, does CatBoost has uh, online learning or incremental learning? Uh, no, we just uh, retrain with new data. If you if we had new data, or I think we should retrain. We just uh, collect new data to retrain. Weather data. What? Do you, weather data. Ah. Do you use it? Uh, yes, we try, but uh, not in all tasks. But uh, that, yes, we use it. I mean, this in, in this Q. Uh, Does it help? Uh, in Q, it's not so important, I think, because uh, uh, 
Users uh, don't uh, walk from airports, uh, don't walk from airports because it's uh, long distance. We use transport uh, all time, all times, but and uh, the weather is not so important, I think. So you have not tried? What? You have not added this data? No. Uh, I don't check on uh, the same data set, uh, but uh, because some uh, some things in the uh, is, uh, we have something uh, more data for our model, and it's hard to use uh, the same model. Uh, in your task. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you have um, that you do retraining and do have some pipelines, automatic pipelines for such tasks. For example, every Monday, I don't know, you collect all your data and automatically update your model. Uh, we try to do automatically pipeline for every task. Uh, some of tasks uh, train, uh, uh, for instance, every week. Uh, some tasks uh, maybe every month uh, because it's harder to retrain. Or some model uh, is uh, need to be fresh. Some model not. So, thank you. Uh, so, if you don't have any uh, additional questions, we still have some time. Some time, and uh, we would like to invite two best teams according to the. I mean, yeah, that's coming unexpectedly, but two best best teams according to the public data. So, uh, if you are kind of not scared to talk uh, uh, in front of the audience, the team called Million Farmer or it's Farmer. Uh, it, it fund intended. Are you here, guys? Yeah. Yeah, please come in. And uh, Zvezdashka team, uh, if you could like uh, explain, uh, like like the previous guys did uh, in the previous section about your solution. Okay, I suppose my solution is seeing with well your solutions, but maybe I best uh, feed cat boost and maybe use more intervals and windows. I use uh, features like a baseline and that. Uh, uh, target uh, in the past uh, how long uh, will be uh, how long was made it uh, and uh, taxi rights in history and uh, I use uh, proportion uh, I see uh, my count of rights in past and uh, Read it on the count of rights in day before. Uh, oh, I use uh, holidays, I use weekdays, I use uh, Islamic holidays, uh, and a lot of uh, hour and minutes and uh, weekday combinations. Is that all? Okay, what about us? We used exactly the same features he first mentioned about the time, the K position will wait for the for his order, like yesterday, a week before, two weeks before. Then, the first improvement actually was that when we fixed the template, because a template didn't work well for periods, for example, from the two weeks to today. It was a mistake, we, we found zeros, decided first to drop this column, but then our guys just fixed it, and it was a big improvement. Then we used smoothness, and actually it was funny because in all our submissions we have two, two archives, normal and joke archive. Why? Because uh, in one we use smoothness both on train and test data, and in joke we use smoothness in train, but don't use it on test. For track B and for track C it is 
quite good for track A, a it doesn't work I don't know why then we use also something like weekdays and so on but I think one of the good feature of our solution was that we decided to validate first on some test data but then to train on the whole train set and uh, you know make our validation online using just leaderboard we just train on the whole set upload solution and then try to reduce the amount of iterations of learning rate and go step by step by to the best model because actually we could add one month for free in our train set and actually it is quite good uh, one more uh, we have a, a discretic target and uh, I make around my prediction uh, in uh, test uh, system uh, just round to uh, uh, close the stint Okay, the first, okay, the first feature is very simple. For example, uh, you go one day before, and for K position, how long in this moment, one day before, I will wait if I am the driver, for example, I am fifth in the queue, right? When I will get my order. I can calculate it in just in history. So the time, the K's driver will wait until his order in past. So it is very similar to the our features we have in template, but it will be kind of different a little bit. And one more moment. Actually, you, all of you used CutBoost. We also used only CutBoost in file submissions, but we'd like to use LSTM, for example, but we waste our time on it. We cannot implement it on a test server. I don't understand why. We just may a simple LSTM to check, then upload to test server, and it was always fault. Uh, probably it is because of some difference in packages, in some difference in uh, environment, I don't know why, but finally we didn't have any chance to check LSTM model. We used Keras for LSTM, and it didn't work at all. Uh, but what did you mean by smoothness? You said you smoothed train data and train. Yeah, it is simply uh, we used for first mean smooth and then we use exponential smooth as well. Exponential smooth means that you take some part of today, for example, 0 0.3 multiplied by today data and uh, 0 0.7 will multiply the day before or minute before, sorry, minute before, and it will be like a new data data series. Do you understand? No. So it's just a window. You go window and window, and to get today uh, this minute value, you multiply this minute value by 0.3, for example, and multiply previous value by 0.7. And it makes not your very like high peaks. It make it smaller. It make it more robust. For airport three and two, it was very important because they are very high peaks. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, okay, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, like uh, yeah. Let's give it up to.